Hi, I would like to demonstrate a new feature in the BB Stats building block, the open source analytics module for Blackboard. The learning management system adoption report is a great way to track the adoption of tools in Blackboard by your organization, but also it's a great way to reach out to faculty at their level of adoption with information that they need in order to take the next step and increase the adoption. So let's go with the demonstration. I'm in the administrator panel, the sysadmin tab will go ahead and activate the uh, dashboard. Among all the uh, uh, previous features of the system, we now have the LMS adoption report. We'll go ahead and dive right into it. The LMS adoption report starts by showing some high-level information, total number of courses on the system, how many courses were created in the semester we are targeting, how many were accessed by instructors, how many were not, how many are available, how many are not available. Now the semester is selected in the configuration of the building block you can see here that it is based on the course ID string and we are looking at uh, 2015 spring semester. So there are two basic parts to the report. The first part is going to help us to reach out to instructors and the second part will help us to track their progress. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the scenarios and uh, business logic um, situations that uh, will help us to create this kind of reach out to uh, faculty. First of all, uh, we have a, a list of uh, email addresses which can be immediately copied and pasted uh, into the, the blind copy of an email client uh, or put in a spreadsheet and, and processed. But the first question that uh, we're trying to address is uh, a list of instructors who accessed at least one course this semester. So these are people who are obviously interested in Blackboard. Uh, perhaps we would uh, reach out with uh, some uh, statistics about how Blackboard is used in general. Uh, these are uh, stakeholders who access actual courses, not just logged in, but accessed their courses. Next, we have instructors who have not accessed any of their courses this semester. Now, a different type of communication uh, might be required here. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, the faculty need to uh, see uh, the benefit of having uh, email communication that goes to the entire class immediately, or the benefits of the photo roster, or any of the tools that can be used without putting your class even online. Next, instructors who never logged into Blackboard but have courses assigned this semester. As you can see, this is a fairly short list, but this might be uh, the population which will be uh, difficult to uh, uh, invite to Blackboard, but uh, these might be uh, some adjuncts, so uh, uh, a different type of communication uh, belongs here. Next, we have instructors who made at least one course available. Perhaps there is basic training, perhaps there are new tools being added to the next semester. Uh, this would be uh, a great population which is active, which is using Blackboard, and uh, these are the stakeholders uh, that uh, can take the next step as far as using advanced features of Blackboard. Next, we have instructors who did not make any of their courses available, but did log in to Blackboard. So we can see this intermediate step where uh, faculty are logging into Blackboard uh, but are not making courses available. Now, at the beginning of the semester, perhaps an email to this group would help them to realize that uh, depending on the policy at your organization, uh, faculty have to make their courses av available for students to actually see them. Uh, it is also okay though to use Blackboard uh, for communication tools, for uh, any of the uh, uh, tools that we have uh, inside uh, without students actually using it. Next we have instructors who edit at least one course item 
such as a folder item, assignment, but did not make the course available. Now this flag is determined by comparing the date of course creation to the edit date of any of the course content. So the situation that sometimes we have with similar reporting uh, modules would be that most courses have some content in them when they are created, be that the menu that's created automatically or content that was pre-selected by the administrator to be part of any new course. Well, this list uh, is created based on the following logic. Even though a new course has some default content, this content is not viewed as customized. We are comparing the uh, date uh, edited for each content item in the course with the time the course was created. And at least 10 minutes needs to pass um, after the course creation for the uh, content items to be counted as changed. So now we have uh, a list of faculty who are using Blackboard, perhaps playing with features, but are not making courses available. Now commonly in this list you will have uh, instructional designers who are perhaps developing some courses but they are not making them uh, they're not making them uh, visible but then there's a fair amount of faculty who uh, perhaps need a little more encouragement to complete the instructional design process of their courses and so they can be targeted uh, perhaps with an offer of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetup with an instructional designer so this is the first part uh, the, the uh, reach out to faculty a way to uh, increase adoption. And the second part, the tracking part, is broken into two areas where we have tools that Blackboard uh, has broken either by categories, and these are the gateway categories or the catalog categories, and then institution name. So here is the difference. The gateway categories or the cattle categories are created in the system and are editable by faculty. So under customization in the course, you can go to properties and assign categories. So this information is helpful, but perhaps does not meet uh, the kind of uh, consistent comparison requirements from semester to semester uh, that you might have to track uh, the adoption. Most of the time, and I'm going to go ahead and activate the course availability report, most of the time there are many categories here because over the years uh, categories uh, were created. If your organization is uh, anything like ours, there are a, a number of iterations of uh, uh, ideas of how to use categories. So now we have a set of categories that really would need uh, a cleanup and uh, again because they are assigned uh, one to many um, uh, re relationship, they may not be the kind of a, a metric that really we're looking for. But most organizations uh, do use them. So the report provides the uh, a number of uh, courses this semester that were created, and we auto create courses, so this will be a total of courses that this department offers. How many were made available, and how many are uh, unavailable? But perhaps a, a better way to track this data is through a field which the organization can control. And there is an institution name field in the course main table, which is somewhat of a hidden field and uh, used uh, historically in the Blackboard system. Uh, what we uh, can do with this field is we can populate it with snapshot. So as you create courses, you basically would add institution name and then populate the uh, department or college or organization however you would like to uh, then report on uh, the progress of this group of courses. And so we did this by populating uh, colleges. So now when I go to um, course availability, you'll see that the list is much shorter and the breakdown is meaningful to uh, our organization.
Now, this kind of breakdown is then available for each tool, like the uh, announcements, for example. And so this way, we can uh, create uh, a report which will uh, tell us how many courses are being used uh, with this particular feature. But also, if we really wanted to, we can also provide graphs and reports on how many announcements a particular department, so how heavily is this feature used. And we can report here on assessments, on assignments, on content items. And again, when it comes to content items, these are edited or custom content items that faculty would perform after the course was already populated initially by default structures. When it comes to the Grade Center columns, uh, this report is going to show only Grade Center columns which are not calculated. So most courses are created with a total and the weighted grade columns, but these uh, do not uh, prove that uh, faculty are in any way using the Grade Center. So we are looking for uh, the non-calculated uh, fields, which means that there's an intention to use them for, uh, for grading and that the Grade Center was customized. So this system is going to uh, report from semester to semester uh, the adoption and just a few minutes of copying and pasting uh, will help you to put together a report similar to this one where each college has certain number of courses available unavailable and then each feature is uh, tracked uh, you can of course do some percentages at the bottom uh, this can be stripped down to only show courses so the number of announcements doesn't matter the number of grade center columns uh, but now this is the same unit uh, this simply means a number of courses uh, in at the organization and if you are uh, savvy with Excel, you can, of course, turn this into uh, a set of uh, graphs uh, like, uh, like this one. Well, I hope that uh, uh, you enjoyed this uh, demonstration. Uh, this module is available at Ocelot, so at ocelot.org. And uh, you'll find this uh, under BBStats Activity uh, Dashboard. Thank you.